Good day everyone. It is nice to see you again. Welcome to our any learning as our learning community. Lesson 2. The Incident Command System. The Incident Command System, or ICS, is a management tool for organizing personnel, facilities, equipment, and communication or any emergency situation. Under this structure, one person is designated as Incident Commander. This person must be continuously informed of all activities and informed about any deviation from the established plan. Whereas the ICS is primarily a field structure and process, aspects of it are used at the level of an individual hospital's emergency response plan as well. The ICS tries to avoid historical problems related to mass casualty incidents or MCIs, such as inadequate planning, poor communications, lack of on-scene needs assessment, or triage of patients. The ICS also implements perimeters and areas to optimize responder safety and patient flow, as well as the preservation of evidence and environment. One approach to hospital incident command is called the Hospital Incident Command System, or HICS. Hospital Disaster Planning Every hospital and emergency department should have a comprehensive emergency plan. In most hospitals, the emergency department comprehensive emergency plan will be a part of the hospital plan. While the plan is important, the planning process that created the plan is far more important. The following are the things that a hospital should be planned comprehensively in hospital during a disaster. 1. Surge capacity. 2. Staffing. 3. Credentialing. 4. Stockpiling and logistics. 5. Resource inventories. 6. Security issues. 7. Hazmat slash CBR any readiness or hazardous material slash chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and explosive materials readiness. 8. Collaboration and integration with public health. 9. Equipment and supplies. 10. Utilities. 11. Facility evacuation. And 12. Drills and exercises. 1. Surge capacity. In cases of bioterrorism or infectious disease outbreaks, patients may present to their primary care physician or an urgent care center to receive initial diagnosis and treatment. The patients who can be expected to arrive at the emergency department in these cases would be those who could not access a private physician. Incidents of chemical and biological terrorism as well as pandemic or epidemic incidents of infectious diseases may arguably produce the most significant burden on the healthcare system. 2. Staffing. The widespread staffing shortages, primarily in the field of nursing, negatively impacts hospital emergency management efforts. Moreover, the supply of healthcare professionals does not meet the demand for even basic healthcare services, so the idea of surge capacity, particularly in light of nursing resources, may be challenging to address. Alternatively, healthcare providers may also act in dual public safety capacities within the community. For instance, hospital-based first responders may also be volunteer firefighters within the community. 3. Credentialing. It has been shown that well-meaning volunteers will come to hospitals during crisis to offer assistance. Hospital emergency management plans must address the means to screen and place volunteers. Some plans may call for volunteers to register in advance so that in case of an emergency incident, they will already be conversant with the facility's emergency management plan. 4. Stockpiling and logistics. The ability of a healthcare institution to remain self-sufficient to provide and sustain core services without the support of external assistance for at least 96 hours from the inception of an incident, with a goal of 7 days. A simple rule of thumb when developing the stockpiling and logistics section of the hospital emergency management plan is, if a resource is not accessible by foot, it does not exist. 
5. Resource Inventories. Hospital emergency management plans must include documentation and tracking of equipment, supplies, and resources. These inventories should include medical and non-medical, for instance, food, linen, water, fuel for generators, and transportation vehicles, personal protective equipment, PPE, and pharmaceutical supplies. In the case of pharmaceuticals, some hospitals choose to keep stockpiled caches of commonly used drugs for use in certain emergency incidents. 6. Security Issues The concept of locking down or restricting access to a healthcare facility. It is essential to control of the flow of patients to the areas where care will be provided, access to the facility only by authorized staff, accounting for staff and patients in times of evacuation, prevention of potentially contaminated patients entering the hospital prior to contaminating staff, other patients and facilities, and prevention of acts of terrorism. 7. Hazmat slash CBR any readiness, or, hazardous material slash chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear, and explosive materials readiness, patients will be decontaminated at the scene by first responders, and then be triaged, treated, and transported to the emergency department. The decontamination process serves a dual purpose. 1. It removes the potential agent that is causing harm to the patient, and two, it prevents the spread of secondary contamination to other patients and hospital staff. We have come to realize from recent incidents involving victim contamination that many ambulatory victims will leave the scene and bypass emergency medical services decontamination and triage, seeking medical care on their own. Acute care hospitals are unprepared for handling an event involving the release of a nuclear, biological, or chemical, or NBC agent. The most often cited weaknesses are in overall. 1. Lack of training. 2. Lack of PPE. 3. Lack of resources and equipment to rapidly and reliably perform preliminary agent detection. And 4. Lack of appropriate medical facilities, equipment, and supplies to effectively isolate infectious patients and manage them through the course of their illnesses. 8. Collaboration and integration with public health. In order for disaster preparedness and response to be successful, it must involve interagency resources and consider the three C's of emergency response planning, collaboration, cooperation, and coordination. Public health agencies have the responsibility to coordinate and serve as the lead agency for disasters involving mass care. This may include assisting both hospitals and communities to establish alternative care sites, or ACS. 9. Equipment and supplies. Many hospitals replenish their central supply on a just-in-time basis, clearly ineffective in preparing to treat a mass influx of patients. Maintaining an adequate pharmaceutical stock of essential antibiotics, antidotes, and specialty medications in case of a disaster is often viewed as cost prohibitive due to the shelf life and daily usefulness of certain drugs. 10. Utilities. Ensuring that basic electrical services are provided is often best handled through the use of emergency generators. Water needed for consumption and essential care activities. Water needed for equipment and sanitary purposes presents additional challenges. 11. Facility evacuation. All staff, clinical and non-clinical alike, must be trained in the principles of evacuation. In an incident where time is limited, ambulatory patients should be moved first with minimal guidance from staff. The greatest efforts should be directed to rapid transport of patients who must remain prone and life support dependent patients. The hospital should list the methods used to evacuate people and inventories of the resources and related equipment and supplies needed to also be evacuated. And when evacuation is still necessary, hospitals should transport not only the patients, but also the patients related, relevant medical information and necessary supportive equipment and 12. Drills and exercises. 
the purpose of conducting drills and exercises is to assess whether or not a facility is adequately prepared to handle an incident with relatively low probability but with extremely significant impact on the health system and to identify areas that need improvement from an operational and planning level. Kindly click the next button for part 2. Thank you for listening. Have a good day, and be safe. Agyamanak.